and welcome to Steph Time. My name is Stephanie and I do not know about you guys, but I have basically been living in my pajamas. It is winter, it is gloomy, and most of the time my pajamas are like a ratty old t-shirt and some sweatpants. And I just wanted to make some nice loungewear sets for myself. So today I have made for you two different loungewear sets. They're all just two different brown fabrics. They can kind of be mismatched. Hopefully it will inspire you to make some beautiful loungewear pieces for yourself and to, you know, kind of combine style and comfort. And so if you guys like this video, make sure to like it. And if you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, let's jump into it. All right, the first garment I'm tracing out is the Bluma Tank by Paradise Patterns. This is a free pattern if you sign up for their newsletter. And I'm also tracing out the Bay Flares by The Hemming. I have not tried either of these patterns, but I thought that they would be great for a loungewear set because they just seem super comfy. Now I'm cutting them out with my super sharp, <laughs> with my super sharp shears. I'm cutting out the Bay Flares on the ground because they're kind of big. And I'm using my self-healing mat and rotary cutter for my smaller garments. I've cut out all of my fabric for both loungewear sets. So I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing. Okie dokie, so we're gonna start by serging the shoulder seams and the side seams of our tank top. I'm first gonna mark center front with a little snip into the seam allowance. So I'm just gonna line up the shoulder seams and the side seams right here, right here. Right here, right here. Looking good. And then we're going to sew the other side as well. So we've got like the outline of a tank top. So next we're gonna want to attach the edges of our, or the armbands and the neckband, right sides together along the short edge so that we have like one circle of fabric. There's our neckband and we've got our armbands. Remember we're gonna do this right sides together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide this into quarters and mark it with a pen. So the way we're gonna do that, obviously there's half, so we're gonna mark that there with a pen. And then we're gonna line up our pen and where we just sewed our seam. And then we're gonna put a pen here and a pen here. Now I'm gonna do that to the armbands and then I'll let you know. All right, next we're gonna quarter the neck hole and all the arm holes, so we're doing that same way, just lining up our shoulder seams, putting a pin here and here, and then lining up those pins and putting a pin at the other points. And we're gonna do that for the neck hole and the arm holes. Once you have quartered everything, you're gonna line up the quarters, making sure that the seam is at the back of the neck. You're gonna line everything up, pin it, and then evenly distribute the width of fabric in between the two pieces like so, pinning as you go. You don't want it super stretched, but you want it to be evenly distributed like so. Beautiful. Okay, now I'm going to serge this edge. You just wanna make sure to not stretch it as you go. I'm also going to change out my needle. This is a ballpoint jersey needle. So I'm gonna change that out and then I'm gonna sew with a narrow zigzag stitch two centimeters from the edge of what we just sewed. It's me again. 
All right, I'm gonna do the same thing I just did by attaching it and then sewing two centimeters down on the armholes as well. All right, now that I've done my zigzag stitch two centimeters away from the edge, I need to do my top stitching. I'm gonna use a twin needle. So I'm gonna fold this over and then it'll be like a thicker neckband. So let's get into it, shall we? So last night, I finished the tank top. It's looking cute. I like the binding around the edges. Most of the tank tops I do just do kind of like a folded one. So I like that this one is a little bit different. Um, yeah, I think it turned out cute. Um, it's got like a little hem at the bottom. Now I'm gonna work on the pants that go with this tank top. And it's pretty easy. I think it's just like side seams, inner seam, and then waistband, and then hem. So, let's do it. We are ready. Okay, I'm gonna lay the pants, oh, the pants front, on top of the pants back with right sides together matching the notches. So now we're gonna sew the side seams right here. Okay, now that we've done our side seams, we're gonna do the inseams. So we're just gonna line up these here and sew down to create two leg tunnels. Turn one of our legs inside out. Then we're gonna stick it inside our other leg, matching up the crotches. <laughs> this is gonna be our crotch area right here. So we're gonna pin that and match up all of the seams and then we are going to sew that. So if you pull that leg out, the one that we turned inside out, now we have a pair of pants. Look at that. It's like a full on pair of pants. Bell bottoms. Okay, that's enough of you guys seeing my butt for now. All right, I am measuring my elastic to be the size of my waist and I am folding the fabric of the waistband over the elastic and pinning it down. We're gonna sew this, but we're gonna make sure to not catch the elastic in our seams. So I'm just making sure to be really precise about my measuring so that I can measure it on my the base plate of my sewing machine. So as you can see, I'm even like measuring it here just to make sure putting down a magnetic seam guide because I really don't wanna sew through that elastic. Voila, nice. All that is left to do on these pants is hem the bottom. So I'm just gonna fold everything up by two centimeters, pin it, and then use my twin needle, which has been acting kind towards me recently. So I'm happy about that. I'm just folding this up, pinning it down, making sure that I'm staying consistent with my hem allowance so that when I go to my machine, <laughs> so that I, when I go to my machine, <laughs> it's super easy. I can follow the seam gauge on my base plate of my sewing machine. Again, super easy. It's giving me 70s vibes. So I still have a little bit more fabric. So we might just make something to wear over this. Maybe like a um, oversized sweater or something. And this fabric is quite comfy. I will save you guys the trouble of going through this tutorial right now. I'll be posting a tutorial on how to make this sweater very soon because I'm going to release it as a pattern very soon for all of you to make at home. So as you can see here, it's really quick, really simple and super duper cozy. So keep your eyes out for that. It will be in your subscription box soon. I just finished this sweatshirt. This is the sweatshirt I'm about to release. I wanted to have something a little bit baggier on top of these really tight pants. So let me show you the whole fit. The whole fit, ta-da, and I've even got the tank top underneath. <clears throat> but yeah, this was a good excuse to try out my pattern in a kind of rib knit, though I am stupid and I accidentally put the neck bend on backwards. Everybody makes mistakes. And um, <laughs> I didn't do a waistband or sleeve cuffs because I just wanted it like really 
loungy and I think it makes the whole outfit look so much better. I was feeling a little bit uh, exposed before, so. Well, that's the loungewear outfit for now. I will catch up with you guys <laughs> in a little bit. Ad break. This video could not have been made possible without our lovely sponsor, which is Zaloof Fabrics. I chose these fabrics from Zaloof, and it was difficult to choose what I wanted because they had so many awesome options. Zaloof just recently started selling their commercial quality garment fabrics to consumers like you and me, us home sewists. They've been selling to dress designers for over 35 years, and many name brands get their fabric from them. Zaloof's fabrics are designed in New York City by their in-house designers, and they offer a diverse product line of solid, printed, novelty, and dead stock fabrics, in addition to the awesome knit fabrics I found here for this video. And they've also given me a promo code for you guys to shop with them. Buying from Zaloof is super awesome. They've got really great prices. They allow you to order a free swatch of any fabric that you want, and their shipping is super fast. So I definitely recommend if you're looking for any awesome quality fabrics, go and check them out. And please use the promo code in the description box below, and I'll also link to their website. All right, now back to our regular schedule of content. For our second loungewear set, I'm making the Agnes PJs by Paper Theory Patterns. I have made this pattern before, but not with this type of fabric. I did not order enough of this fabric because I wasn't initially planning on using this fabric. So as you can see, I'm trying to Tetris this together to figure out how to cut it out. I actually ended up going against the grain line, but it was fine, luckily this time. And the fabric turned out so lush and amazing, so I'm glad I did it. All right, first of all, we finished our first loungewear set. We did pants, tank top, sweater. And it's all matching, looking beautiful. And second of all, I got a new chair. Don't mind the dirty spot, I need to clean it. Third of all, I've got my second loungewear set of the Agnes PJs cut out, ready to go. So I'm just gonna sew it up. Can't wait to wear it. It's gonna be super warm, super cozy. All right, let's do it. One thing I'm going to do before I start sewing anything is transfer all of the markings from the pattern pieces to the actual fabric. Um, this is easiest to do now rather than later because just trust me, it is. When I cut my fabric out, I keep all of the pattern pieces pinned to it. So I'm just gonna mark, I'm gonna cut into the seam allowance just a tad to mark all of these markings before I remove this paper and put it away. All right, we gotta prep those pockets to put them on our bodice, sewing those down. Okay, just a note, this fabric is pretty thick and this pattern has curved pockets. While I could just make them square pockets, I kinda wanted a softer rounded look. And so I did a basting stitch about a centimeter away from the edge all the way around, which is the amount that they want me to fold in anyways. And this will help me while I'm at my iron to not have to like measure each little bit. And then once I've ironed it, I'm just pinning it so that it kind of holds its shape um, to stay like this until I pin it to my garment. We are now going to attach this at the shoulder seams for the front and the back. And then we're gonna finish it with our serger. You can do French seams, you can do whatever, but this fabric is pretty thick. So we're just gonna do um, serger. I don't know why it paused for so long. I was thinking about flat felled seams as an option, which is definitely an option, but I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> Next, right sides together, we are gonna pin the underarm all the way to the hem of the shirt. We're gonna do from the edge on both sides. Same, same deal. Just got it all attached. 
um, and tried it on since this is a thicker material first of all it's looking very cute I can definitely see myself just wearing this out and about or the seam allowance in here just isn't really like laying flat the way I ironed it so I feel like I should top stitch it down the pattern does not call for this and I already <laughs> did the underarm so I made my my job much harder but I think I'm going to do that to the upper shoulder seams and the back seam just so that it'll lay flat. I don't want it like getting weird on me and I wanted to let you know. It's already looking so much better. So I'm definitely going to do that to the top of the sleeves and the underarms if I can manage. I, I should. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so as you can probably tell, you can't really see much. It's because I have the sleeve kind of inside out. I have to just work slowly and it kind of looks like a tunnel, but I hope that you guys can understand what I'm talking about. I have the sleeve inside out and I'm having to work. Like, kind of shifting as I go so I can get all the way to the edge of the sleeve. to the other side and the underarms. Hope you catch my drift. I clipped the wrong end, so I'm gonna put clips on the other side first. So first, because this fabric is quite bulky, I'm grading the seam allowance. I'm cutting it all down by about half. And then I am taking half of the seam allowance, like one, one flap of the fabric, and cutting that down by half again to reduce some of that bulk. Turning it inside out pushing out the corners, looking lovely, and using my fingers to rub that seam out. I know, just like try it at home because it really does help before you take it to the ironing board. Just making sure to match up the notches here at the seams. It will mean that I have to kind of like stretch some pieces of the collar to fit, but kind of doing middle points and then stretching, finding the middle, and putting a pen in it. Ow! Poke myself. There you go. Now I'll just make it easier when you're sewing. is attached. Time to prep the facings. It's the next day and this is what we finished last night. We put the facing on the coat. Um, I still need to kind of uh, trim down the seam allowance before flipping it. But so far, it's looking really nice. Basically, what we need to do now is trim down the seam allowances and flip the facing out. We're gonna hem the bottom. We're gonna tack down the neckline at the back and then hem the bottom, hem the sleeves. We'll be about done. All right, I've graded the seams. I'm pushing out the corner and I'm pushing this little flap up into the other flap and covering the flap with that flap and pinning that whole flap down to cover up that stitch line that we use to attach the collar. This just adds a really, really nice finish. And then I'm choosing my little stuff time tag and I'm placing my little stuff time tag. So cute. The 
this this has a um, kind of a notched collar and as you can see here I press the seam allowance like towards the body and away from the body and I edge stitch that down um, like on this side and then switch to this side which will help the collar to fold at that area rather than staying up and weird. I bagged out these corners, um, which means that like I'll be able to turn this inside out and cap and capture the hem inside of that, which is really cute and clean. So in the meantime, I'm going to fold it up. I'm gonna do it a little bit smaller so that I don't catch the stitching where that pocket is. So I'm gonna do like this and then sew maybe there all the way around. All right, here's how it's looking. Yes, it is pretty cropped. This is all I could do with the fabric I had. And I'm looking crooked and very pale. I'm not too worried about the crop length because I wear crop stuff anyways and the pants are pretty high-waisted, so. Should be able to go with it. Oh, it's so warm. Let's hem the sleeves, add some, a little button or two, like a little bit of that action, and then do the pants. To work on the pants they don't even have side seams so literally super simple construction I have finished the edges and seams of, oops, let me put that. I have two pant legs, so we're gonna turn one of them inside out. Ooh. Then we're gonna stick it inside the other, other pant leg. So I've got that one inside out, so they're right sides together. And this is how you can sew the crotch seam. All right, now I'm making a casing for the waistband. I'm not sewing it with the waistband already in there. I'm leaving it in a little opening to feed the elastic through, like so. Measuring my elastic, cutting it, and using a little safety pin to feed it through. And once we have connected it on both ends, we're gonna pin that, try it on, see if it fits and then sew it so you don't have to redo this step like I did. It keeps puffing out right here. <clears throat> Now this pattern suggests to use a kind of like light to medium weight woven and this is like a heavy weight knit <laughs> so I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing the same thing I did though this is very comfy. But what I'm going to do to solve this, obviously adding buttons and buttonholes would um, kind of anchor that down but I also have um, fusible interfacing that you're supposed to use between layers like this so I might cut out a piece the size of or a little bit smaller than the facing slip it in there iron it down that way it sits really flat so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and as you can see also the collar is flipping up quite a bit 
Oh gosh, I think that also has to do with just the, the weight of the fabric. All right, now I'm using my expanding sewing gauge to mark my buttonholes and where I want them to be. And then I'm also using my little seam gauge to make sure that they're all equidistant from the edge of the jacket. All right, now I'm trying to choose my buttons. I wasn't really feeling anything until I found this one and then I was like, whoa, it's meant to be so cute, giving me 60s vibes. So I went ahead and made my buttonholes for the, that size of the button. Yes, my machine was struggling, but you just help it through. And then we're going to cut open those buttonholes. I have like a buttonhole cutter, but there's also another way for you to cut and open a buttonhole with a seam ripper. Just make sure to put a pin at the end so you don't actually accidentally just slip all the way through and I'm trimming my threads and then using my fray check to put in all the buttonholes then I'm marking through the buttonholes where I should put my buttons and sewing those buttons on by hand and once these buttons are on baby we're done Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that you plan to stick around just a little bit longer by subscribing. And um, I hope that this encouraged you to make yourself a lounger set because it is worth it. And thank you so much to Zaloof Fabrics for sending these fabrics over and sponsoring this video. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.